discuss the, the, the parliamentary business of the week. And uh, now it's uh, just coming up to 9.30 and um, I'm heading to a debate in Westminster Hall, as well as the chamber. We have uh, actually just off Westminster Hall in the Grand Committee Room, we have a second chamber where uh, some other issues which wouldn't necessarily get time on the floor of the House of Commons, uh, members are able to have further uh, d debates. And this morning we have one from Robert Flalley, who's the, the Labour MP for, for Stoke-on-Trent South. And, uh, for munitions workers and uh, representing Rochester and Strood and uh, constituency such a military heritage, Shorts Brothers on the Esplanade, the Royal Dockyard and uh, I think also uh, people who have worked in uh, munitions factories, at least uh, down in Faversham and uh, up in Woolwich, uh, I wanted to contribute to this uh, debate and uh, add my voice to the calls for, for, for re re recognition. I know both with the Arctic Medal uh, and also a constituent in Cliff Woods, uh, where I was able to help him get uh, the medal he deserved for, for his service in Suez, which hadn't been recognised. But it's such an important issue, and with a lot of these veterans in their 80s or 90s, often women who served in munitions factories, I just think it's right that we should uh, try and give them recognition. As wartime munitions were also manufactured in Kettering, it's my good fortune to have the privilege of chairing at this morning's debate. In a moment I'll be calling Mr Reckless and then it'll be Nia Griffith, <coughs> Phil Wilson, Hugh Ranker davis and Russell Brown. Yeah. In the constituents I represent Rochester and Strood and Medway Towns more, more, more broadly. I'm not sure whether on the, the, the def definition put forward by the Honourable m Member that, that itself qualifies as an area but what I, I do know he mentioned Faversham and also of course at Woolwich there's the, the, the Royal Ordnance very very large uh, uh, munitions manufacturer and for people in my constituency whether it's Rochester, Strood, uh, Chatham Station is also within the, within the constituency it's within sort of half, half an hour travel to work whether at Faversham or Woolwich and I've no doubt that <coughs> significant numbers of uh, constituents for the, for the area will at least have served in munitions in, in, in the past and that perhaps uh, a number of those are still alive and resident in the So that area. was a really uh, worthwhile uh, debate. Um, remains to be seen whether the, the Minister will, will, will move or uh, if, if a munitions medal is, is something that we will be able to take forward. But certainly it's a debate and it's a more, more informal surroundings in the Westminster Hall which um, has allowed a lot of people to um, speak about their constituency interests and uh, a, a call for people who deserve uh, recognition. Just come out in Westminster, the, the, the main Westminster Hall behind us, a lot of chairs are uh, being put out and uh, we're about to go on to, to recess for, for Easter, but I, I understand what this is, is the silk ceremony. So uh, anyone who's uh, being made a, a, a QC at the Queen's Council, uh, apparently that comes and takes place in Westminster Hall, where a lot of... Uh, a lot of legal work and trials used to happen in medieval days, so it's good to still see it being used for, for legal purposes. Since their creation, uh, it might be useful just starting some digging on their background. Yes, do you want to do a draft of some questions? I'd like to see what Nick Bowles says in reply to me this afternoon. Now, I've got into the earlier section, uh, and then we can think which to questions to submit in light of that. Hi there, uh, my name is Mark Eastham. I'm Mark Reckless MP's Westminster Office Manager. I run the Westminster Office uh, on a day to day basis, uh, which you can see here. Um, my day to day role involves making li Mark's life as easy as possible. So, Mark will regularly chase up uh, constituent concerns in Westminster. So, he will raise parliamentary debates, put in written questions. Uh, Mark does a lot of work on particular policy areas, for example on the European Union and on home affairs issues, and I'm here to help do research for Mark. Um, I act as a gateway for Mark and I help him have access to the information he needs, and also I raise constituent concerns with him, so I will pass on particular letters of interest or highlight particular issues in the constituency that I think he may want to raise in Parliament. So that's my role. I provide Mark with all the admin information he needs to be able to be a good member of Parliament in Westminster and I make all the I do all the practical work that needs to be done to make sure that he can get on and be as good an MP as he can be for you in Washington Street. This is my windowless broom cupboard which the whips uh, initially allocated as my, my office. I have to say though more recently they have uh, allowed me an extra office very similar to this uh, right next door and this is now where my, my, my Westminster um, staff uh, 
particularly mild work, and um, not quite as crowded as, 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 as it was, but um, we still don't have a window, just a skylight. Um, we've had business statement in the, the House earlier, Attorney General's just wrapping up, taking some questions, and I'm about to head, head, head down for um, some statements. There's three of them. Uh, the first is a, a follow-up to, to the statement the Prime Minister gave on the Francis report and uh, the Midstaff's uh, ho hospital and the, the, the scandalous treatment of patients there. There'll then be a statement on the rail franchising, uh, which is good news because there was some confusion about their press release earlier. It seems South Eastern aren't clear what the Department for Transport are saying about their franchise renewal, which uh, was expected for 2014, and I, I'm keen either at that statement or, or perhaps at a separate meeting later, given my lunch uh, appointment, to, to try and clarify uh, exactly when the South Eastern franchise uh, will uh, be renewed or um, go out to, to tender, because tender, there's uh, quite a lot of dissatisfaction uh, amongst both travellers and MPs with South Eastern. Uh, there'll, there'll be a final statement, which is uh, the Home Secretary on the UK Border Agency, and uh, it's a big area of uh, Home Affairs Committee's work, which I'm very involved in, so it's uh, important I'm in the chamber for that. And I um, look forward to hearing what she's got to say. I'm just about to join a, a lunch with a, a few members of the Ukrainian uh, par Parliament. Uh, we have uh, various all-party parliamentary groups on different issues, but including countries. And there's one of those with respect to Georgia, which I, I chair and get quite involved with. There are a small number of others, including the Ukraine one, where I take an interest and every now and again we'll meet uh, visiting people from that country here. And looking forward with the Europe Minister David Lillington and uh, John Whittingdale, who chairs the Ukraine group, uh, to meeting a few of these people who are over from Ukraine. And uh, we do hope that reforms continue in that uh, country, even if perhaps the, the path to reform has been a, a little less rapid than we'd have hoped. And is he on a particular side of the, the, the nationalist divide, or does he straddle that? No, he's, he's generally seen to be centre-right, um, but he's, a, he's to some extent, his party is seen as just, is breaking away from the sort of long jam of the two old parties, uh, and I think people will see him as a sort of new blood coming into politics, which is certainly welcome in that country. Mark Reckless. <laughs> I welcome this statement. Could the Home Secretary say something about the staff from uh, Mr Whiteman, who we're, we're seeing at three o'clock as to, to his uh, terms and, and role, but also the staff uh, across the agency. We've recently returned from Abu Dhabi, where they've really seemed to have turned round the visa processing unit there. And I, I just wonder... Are there actually you know, really good people in UKBA and what, what they need is just to be better led? <clears throat> I'm, I'm grateful to my honourable friend for raising this particular issue. It gives me an opportunity to say that there are indeed many people working with UK Borders Agency who are doing so, uh, they are dedicated officers, they are doing an excellent job and certainly in some of the examples that he and others in the Home Affairs Select Committee would have seen, in some of the overseas operations for example, some real change has been brought about in relation to that. For the vast majority of staff uh, who are in these areas of enforcement and, uh, or uh, the immigration and visas work, they won't see change in what they are doing um, but there will of course be change as terms of the Directors General are heading up of those two operations and obviously those are personnel matters on which the uh, permanent secretary will make announcements in well, due course. I got course. to the chamber for the uh, end of the uh, statement on rail franchising and uh, caught, caught, caught the question about um, South Eastern commuters being used as the, the guinea pig for RPI plus three and how the government had, had brought that back to RPI plus, plus one. We then had the Home Secretary statement which was really very, very interesting for me. I do a lot of work on UKBA. Home Affairs Select Committee, we've been criticising UKBA very strongly in a lot of detail for, for some years now, and we've been arguing for it to be broken up. Uh, two days ago, we came out with a report that very strongly criticised Lynn Homer, who was running UKBA when it was so dysfunctional, yet was promoted. And um, in response to that criticism, we renewed the call for the agency to be split up, and the Home Secretary has announced just now that the UK Border Agency is to be split up and there's going to be two separate parts, both taken back into the Home Office, properly controlled by Ministers. And one of those is going to focus on the, the, the mass processing of applications where you just have to have efficient processes. And the second is going to be real enforcement against illegal immigrants and overstayers as more of a police role. And, and those, those two things require very different cultures. So I think it's very good news that the Border Agency is being split up and we're going to 
going to have that focus. Uh, perhaps going to the Home Affairs uh, Committee, uh, coincidentally we have Rob White Whiteman, or perhaps not coincidentally, who's the head of the Border Agency, and we're going to start questioning him. I asked the Home Secretary about his, his role, but um, she didn't clarify on that, so we'll, we'll have to see whether he can perhaps tell us more about what he's doing, as the agency is only about a third of the size it was. I hope at least uh, uh, perhaps his salary and terms and conditions may be adjusted to uh, reflect that, but we look forward to hearing more, and we'll be uh, scrutinising this decision very carefully. So a quick, quick break in our Home Affairs Committee, that was the division bell, so we're just uh, to vote on a important statutory instrument that's quite controversial, so um, off that vote, maybe, maybe one more afterwards, but then hopefully straight back into our uh, questioning of the head of uh, UKBA, if that still is his position. There he is. No, um, Mr. Mr. Reckless, he now ha uh, Mr. Sedwell now has it. Uh, with, with hindsight, Mr. Sedwell, was it really sensible to include that final paragraph in a statement to Parliament on the same day that the Home Office decided it wanted to abolish UKBA? I think on yeah, I think on reflection, Mr. Reckless, it would have probably been you know, if, if uh, a slightly vaguer statement might have been wise, um, but um, I, I I would not accept the criticism that either we or, or let alone the Immigration Minister himself misled. The House, uh, and I think I've, ex I've tried to explain the sequence of these decisions. And there was no, there was certainly no decision by then uh, that there would be a parliamentary statement today. Um, uh, indeed, at that time, we hadn't reached the conclusion about exactly how or when the Home Secretary would make this announcement. Just the Home Affairs Committee, and I now off to speak in the chamber. We have a, a, a long adjournment debate which gives the chance for any backbench member really to raise uh, any issue of concern. And I've got a slot to talk about uh, Natural England and the decision they made to list the uh, Lodge Hill site in their constituency where it was planned that there was going to be uh, 5,000 houses as a site of special scientific interest apparently because the, the, they found 84 nightingales there. And there's quite a lot of anger at Medway Council particularly about that and a central government agency stopping the development they want to see there uh, despite sort of minister, ministers uh, push, pushing that. So I'm going to raise some of those uh, I I issues and uh, look forward to hearing a response from Nick Bowles, the planning minister, who has uh, strong views on these things, so that will be um, interesting. I will have, I think I'm limited to five minutes on, on, on that. Uh, once I've heard the minister's reply, I'll then be heading back to my office where I've got a letter to write to the Chancellor on uh, energy-related uh, issues following my visit to Kings North, and also I want to get down a series of parliamentary questions before the House breaks for the Easter uh, recess so that Ministers uh, can get on with answering those and hopefully I'll have some responses uh, when, when we come back. Earlier this month, uh, Natural England uh, declared MOD land at Lodge Hill in my constituency to be a site of special scientific interest. Now, this site has been designated very clearly in numerous plans over 18 years uh, for 5,000 homes and for um, employment land for 5,000 uh, further people. Thirty-five and a half million pounds has been spent to get it to the point of granting planning consent. And the Council is concerned, to put it at its mildest, to be thwarted at the last hurdle, after all this time and money, by Natural in England, who do not consider the economic impacts. Yeah. 